welcome to episode 44 of Discovering Nagasaki from a Local. My name is Chad. In my ongoing weekly vlogs, you can experience everyday life in this scenic and fascinating part of Japan. This week, only Denise Rollheiser, Daniel Hazen, and Kathy Garrett were able to correctly answer both of last week's vlog questions. Thank you for answering my challenging questions. The first question from last week was, how many seedling trays did I show you on our concrete retaining wall? The answer is 10 seedling trays. The second question from last week was, what is the nearest JR train station to Gyutosen Falls? The answer is Chiwata Station. This is a recent photo that I took of the iris garden in front of the Yagura in Omura Park. The irises in Omura Park are in full bloom right now. There are about 171 varieties of iris in this park. The precipitation of rainy season has also helped the hydrangea in Omura Park to flourish. In today's vlog, I will show you how to cook a delicious and spicy eggplant dish that is popular in Japan, Mabonasu. I will also give you a short tour of an interesting entomological park near Hirado called Tabira Insect Park. Let's get started. To prepare two servings of Mabonasu, I will use 250 grams of ground pork, two medium-sized bell peppers, one large green onion, some ginger, some garlic, two medium-sized eggplants, one cube of vegetable bouillon, a half a tablespoon of soy sauce, half a tablespoon of vegetable oil, a half a tablespoon of sugar, 150 milliliters of water for the bouillon, half a tablespoon of potato starch, two pinches of ground pepper, and one teaspoon of shisen tolanjan, Chinese chili bean paste. I've already cut up the green pepper and green onions into large bite-sized pieces. In addition, I've chopped up the garlic and ginger for this dish. Now I'll cut up some of the eggplant on this cutting board. I'm rotating the eggplant as I cut off large sections, just like this. In order to make the broth for this dish, I added sugar and soy sauce to the bouillon base. Now I'll add the ground pepper and stir it. Next I'll fry the pork in a fry pan along with the vegetable oil. Now that the ground pork is well cooked, I will deep fry the eggplants to soften them up. I'm using these extra long chopsticks to transfer the eggplants into the oil. You can fry the eggplants, but they won't be as tender. I need to keep the white side up in the hot oil to cook these sections properly. It takes 8 to 10 minutes of deep frying before they're ready. The eggplant sections will be cooked when they are soft enough to pinch with the chopsticks, as they are here. Now I'll transfer the sections to a plate covered with uh, paper toweling. After deep frying the eggplant sections, I will deep fry the bell pepper sections. These sections only require about 15 to 20 seconds in the hot oil before they're ready. Once again, I will transfer the sections to a plate covered with paper toweling. I'm using this large and rather inappropriate spoon because I need to do this quickly and our tempura sieve has unfortunately walked off. Now I'll add the diced garlic and ginger on this cutting board to the fried pork. On top of this I will add the green onion sections. 
and the broth that I prepared earlier. I need to fry this mixture for a couple of minutes to soften up the onions. While it's heating up, I'll add half a tablespoon of the Chinese chili bean paste. Now that the onions are soft, I will add the eggplant sections and the bell pepper sections to the fry pan. And finally, I have to thicken up the broth by adding some potato starch and stirring the mixture. Mabonasu is delicious by itself, but it is usually served with steamed rice. This healthy and delicious dish is spicy and relatively easy to prepare. I'm now in front of the entrance of Tabita Insect Park, not far from Hirado in northern Nagasaki. The sign on the left reads Konchukan in Japanese or Insect Hall in English. I'll take you inside and give you a quick tour of the interior of this hall. This is the reception area where you can purchase tickets to view the indoor exhibits and take the guided tour of the surrounding park. In this section of the hall, there are many large photos, posters, and models of insects. Behind this large wooden model of a tombo is a photo of a grasshopper, or bata in Japanese. This display shows where you can find these interesting insects in Kyushu. And on the left is a display that shows some of the insects living in the park outside this hall. Beside the door leading to the park outside is an ant display. And on the right of this map is a large photo of a praying mantis, Kamakiri, and a moth, Ga. The next poster indicates that there are currently 3,597 endangered plant and animal species in Japan. On these walls you can see some photos of a wide variety of insects that are indigenous in Japan. To explore everything in Tobita Insect Park it would take well over an hour. I'll just show you a quick glimpse of the displays they have here. When I last claimed to this facility 16 years ago, it was a lot smaller and in a different location. There aren't many people right now because of the pandemic, but it's a great place to visit for only 410 yen. Inside this hall and in another room, there's a large collection of dead bugs on display. These bugs are from all around the world, not just Japan. In the first four displays on my right are various butterflies from Hirado and Ikitsuki Island, not far from this insect park. Here are some non-indigenous butterflies that were caught in Nagasaki. And these are some kabutamushi and kuagatamushi, rhinoceros and stag beetles, as well as some gokiburi, cockroaches. Above there are some tombo dragonflies, bata grasshoppers, and below is a variety of semi, cicada, and kamikirimushi, longhorned beetles. Above that is a display of various water bugs. On my left are some more rhinoceros beetles, and below some sawtooth stag beetles. On the left are some stag beetles from the Goto Archipelago in Nagasaki. Here's a selection of Miyama stag beetles and a selection of Hirata stag beetles. These snail-eating ground beetles are called Mai Mai Kaburi in Japanese. On the left are some Japanese clam butterflies. Above are some unique Gifu butterflies and some colorful purple emperor butterflies. In this display are some Erasmia moths. In the next two displays are some Asian Chrysodema 
jewel beetles. This is a display of scarab beetles from South and Central America. And below are some scarab beetles from Southeast Asia. And the next two displays are dung beetles from South and Central America. On my left are six displays with beautiful morpho butterflies from South and Central America. These butterflies have very vibrant colors. Even though I filmed less than 40% of the displays in this room, I'll show you some photos of the more unusual insect displays after this video clip. I'll end with these swallowtail butterflies from Southeast Asia. To finish off this tour, I'll show you some of the photos that I took at Tavita Insect Park. Here are the displays for spiders and scorpions from Asia and Africa. Fish flies from China and South America. Leaf insects from Asia and Oceania. Mantises from all over the world. Three displays of stick insects from New Guinea, Asia, and Oceania. And some colorful cicada from Southeast Asia. Use the pause button to verify that there are 33 bugs in this display. The display asks visitors to this insect park to count them. In the outdoor vivarium of this park, you can find stag beetles, caterpillars, stick insects, nanafushi in Japanese, katydids, praying mantises, ladybugs, june beetles, and many other insects. The last two photos show part of the outdoor garden and marsh in Tabita Insect Park. And now for this week's challenging questions. First, how many different types of vegetables did I use in the mabunasu that I prepared today? Second, what type of insect was displayed in a wooden model in front of a large photo of a grasshopper at Tabita Insect Park? Be the first to correctly answer both of these questions in the comments section below. I will announce the first three people who do so at the beginning of episode 45. You can find a complete list of the contents of my vlog episodes on the Facebook link listed below. And you can watch all of my vlog episodes on my online YouTube playlist. Today's B-roll involved cooking, so in episode 45, my B-roll will involve baking. Stay tuned for more interesting vlogs from and about Nagasaki. See you next week.